Today I'm with Poison Ivy. Poison, how old are you? I'm 21. And how long have you been homeless out here in Phoenix? Um, about four years. It's been about four years, yeah, four to five. So when you're 16, 17. I'm um, foster care, kind of threw me out. So you're part of the system, yeah. and after you turn 18, they just, you're an pretty adult, much. get out of here, basically? Yeah, pretty much. It was like, even before I was 18, actually, it was like, um, I think I was like 17. They call it aging out of the system? Yeah, pretty much. Don't they teach you life skills or like education, like something um, to get you started? Not really, but um, they did uh, give me like um, resources to places that could help me out, you know, with um, individual like, um, like sub subsidizing housing and stuff like that. And are you using blues? Yes. Do you know what these pills are made out of? Uh, no. I People are dying every day. You're right, every day. Um, they're, uh, you ever heard of fentanyl? Uh, yeah. So fentanyl is a... It is used by doctors to provide um, to pain relief to can uh, patients with cancer, but the pills you're smoking, they're counterfeit fentanyl pills where they put just toxic, in toxic ingredients and, and uh, they're really super dangerous. That's why you're seeing people you know, passing away, overdosing like almost on a daily basis out here, unfortunately. And yeah. these pills seem to be very cheap. How much do you pay per pill? About five to 10 bucks. And how many pills do you need per day? Between eight to 10, that's a lot. There are some people have told me they do 50 or 100. Yeah. That, that's even more, that's a lot more than you. Different, uh, they tell me it's different, um, different people, different uh, bodies, right, are able to process that stuff, right? The tolerance level for different yeah. people is different, right? And even just hustling up that money, you know? You had to do anything out here. It's crazy. And how do you hustle money to buy these pills? Um, right now, I usually um, just hustle, like I resell, or otherwise, other than that, I'm usually selling my body out here, you know? You do dates? Yeah, using dates and stuff like that. So you, because you're, uh, you came from the system, no family support at all nothing? nothing nope and then they kicked me out right before i was 18 uh 17 so then that means that they're not um liable to pay for my um you know college or um like um apartment you know and stuff like that it kind of sucks this so the system and now being out here in the streets for the past four or five years is really all you know unfortunately pretty much there's like no other like i don't see no other road or like no other option When you were younger, didn't you dream of becoming something, going to school? Yeah. What was that dream? Um, I believe I wanted to be, um, uh, what's it called? Um, um, dang it. Sorry, I'm thinking. Oh, I wanted to join the Army or the Navy. I wanted to do Marine Corps. And I wanted to start from there. And what, what derailed you why, when you turned 18? Why didn't that happen? Um... Honestly, um, being like um, out here and um, peer pressure, you know, being around people. I had a good job at Circle K, you know. I've been working since I was 14. I was working at Circle K, and um, um, someone else, one of my friends, knew that, you know, I would always support my habit because I was working and I, that they could eat off of that too. And so they um, asked me one day, hey, Jackie, you want to go do a blue? And I'm like, what is that? And um, I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I never thought I could get addicted to anything. And then it started from doing blues to doing crystal meth and just went on from there. That's uh, very unfortunate that, because I hear it often that your friends are the ones that introduce you to yeah, these pills. Family. family, absolutely. I've heard that before. And you become a slave to this. Yeah, pretty much you're a slave to the drug. And it's horrible. I would hate for anybody else to end up like that, you know? What do you think has to happen? What do you have to do to break the chains of the of your addiction? Um, honestly, I would say the safest and like um, most efficient way would be like um, 
like being put like um, into like a coma or like being going on ice, you know, just for a while, just enough to like where your body's not feeling for it anymore, you know. Basically, you wake up and like um, I'd say a good like a month or so, month and a half, like you you'll wake up and you won't you know be feeling for that drug anymore. But then it'd be hard, you know. You have to stay away from the smell of it. Just the smell is just so it's so easy like to just get anybody. People have told me it's very addicting very fast. Very. And if you try to get off of it, it's hard to do because the withdrawals are extremely painful. Very. Is there some truth to that? It's very painful, yeah. I've woken up and like my whole bones, like all my bones hurt my body. It's hard to walk around, you know, move around and work or, you know, just in general. There's a, there's a little bit of graffiti, right? right behind you I that see. graffiti says fear god do you fear god do you fear death or do you fear the fear the withdrawals more um i think i fear god more um each and every day you know because um like they say god is also he controls the devil's wrath you know and i believe that a lot of these things like um out here you know are a part of god and like the things that he put out here for people you know he put this out here for people kind of to test people or to challenge people unfortunately you think or yeah i feel like if anybody can get over booze they're very strong very strong like because the only way i can ever see anyone ever doing it is like being asleep or being put in a coma seriously because of how painful it is you know or just like every second of the day just thinking about every second that you don't have one you know it hurts what do the withdrawals feel like for you uh um at first, it's just painful, you know, and then after like a while, it starts to feel like I'm suffocating, like I'm losing breath, you know, it feels like um, my air is getting sucked out my mouth. It's like, it's confusing, you know, and I start to feel like I'm really going to die. I start to see honey, like uh, honey bees and stuff like that. How do you deal with, how do you deal with the violence, the potential violence, the people taking your, your things while you're asleep or slumped out? And don't you fear like just disappearing one day from just a crazy guy Every just day. taking you? Every day. Every day. It's hard out here. Every day. Seriously. And it's scary. Especially because people know like you know that you're addicted to those things out here and so they always use that against you. So there are people that will take advantage of you because of your condition? Yes, your addiction and sometimes i even know that you know but i would still deal with it anyway just because of like how bad i'm feeling for it the the men that approach you for these dates uh, what type of men would you say they are um um i would say they're just people that are um just fiending for you know just uh um they're like sex addicts you know a pedophiles, um, serpents, stuff like that. Other people have told me a lot of construction workers. For I some reason, really, you don't get those. I don't really get too many construction workers, to be honest. It's more, um, honestly, not to be um, racist or anything, but it's more nationality-wise. It's more um, white and black men that are doing this, or like selling them. You know. Interesting. What advice would you give? young people uh for any young people like you you're uh, 16 uh when this was introduced to you what would you advise them um i advise you guys to stay away from your friends if you know they're doing drugs like honestly it's not like when people are telling me this you know i would think like um oh it can't be that bad you know like oh it's nothing i can't handle you know Sometimes I'd even do drugs just to make sure I can mentally overpower myself over it. But this is one of the drugs that you can't do that with. You know, I advise you to, you know, stay in school, you know, go go stay around your family and um, just drink a lot of water. <laughs> Poison Ivy, I'm going to say thank you very much for talking to me, uh, sharing your story, having the courage to share your story. Because like I mentioned to you uh, when I approached you, the purpose of my channel is to create prevention through awareness. So I might not be able to transform your life. You might not be ready for help today or in the near future, but your, this video and your story is gonna impact others that recently started or were thinking about trying 
right? Or you're educating people that in the future will be offered pills like you were offered at a young age. And unfortunately you said yes, but there are, there's, these people that are gonna watch this can say no, have the power to say no. So I'm gonna hand you my card with my number so that you can call me uh, if you need to write a treatment or you need somebody to talk to, I'll try to help you as much as possible, okay? Right. I'm gonna hand you a blessing bag from one of my subscribers, a friend of, my, of mine, her name is Shorty. And uh, let me know if those are items that uh, come in, would come in handy for you out here. Thank you so much, Shorty. Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> it says, first I want to say thank you for accepting this blessing bag my family, my family and friends helped me make for you. I only ask that you do me a favor and say a prayer for me as I battle my struggles with depression, anxiety, and awful thoughts as well. When you can, please pay it forward and bless someone by simply being a friend, helping someone in need. I hope these items help out a little, be safe, and please call Art to go to treatment, give it to a shot. Please, we really do care about you. I'm praying for you. Stay up, stay blessed, stay groovy. Shorty. Thank you, Shorty. It's a really nice bag, and then I got a um, $5 um, gift card to QT as well, and I got a, um, a free Polar Pop drink from Circle K. And there's just drinks, and there's a clean outfit in here. Thank you, Shorty. This really made my day. Yep. Thank you, uh, Shorty, and thank you, uh, Poison Ivy. Um, I'm gonna go grab you some lunch. Lunch has been donated by my subscribers. Thank you. So stay safe. We'll talk soon, okay? All right.